Welcome back to another review. I'm Calvin aka Statue Fanatic and today we will take a look at Sideshow's premium format Angela figure. As always, I would like to start the review by taking a brief look at the character's background and history. Angela was co-created by Neil Gaiman and Todd McFarlane as a superhero antagonist, making her first appearance in Spawn number 9 in 1993. She quickly became one of Spawn's most popular characters. She also starred in her own three-issue miniseries, as well as made notable appearances in other titles such as Glory, Youngblood, Team Youngblood, and Arya. However, many are well aware of the very public feud between Gaiman and McFarlane over the ownership and the rights to this character. I've always wanted a statue of this character to be produced, but once their feud escalated to such a fever pitch, I pretty much assumed this would never happen. The feud was eventually settled with both parties having equal ownership of the character. Then Gaiman and McFarlane later settled with Gaiman eventually walking away owning all rights to the character. Gaiman then sold the character to Marvel. At the same time, it was announced that he also would be returning to Marvel. Angela made her first appearance in the Marvel Universe in the Age of Ultron number 10 in 2013. During this story arc, she encountered the Guardians of the Galaxy where it seems she's become a part-time team member. Later, during the storyline Original Sin, we discover she is Aldrith, who happens to be the daughter of Odin and Freya, which, you guessed it, makes her the long-lost sister of Thor and Loki. Now, I'm okay with all of that. In fact, the story is written in such a way it does not erase her history in the Image Universe, which theoretically leaves the door open for future storylines that could possibly include her crossing over from one universe to the other. Now that we know a little bit about the character and her history, let's talk about the statue. She stands approximately 19 and a half inches high and 15 inches long. But when holding the spear, the statue is actually just under 21 inches long and the base is 7 inches wide. She will not fit in a detolf with the spear and she's too tall to fit in a detolf without taking one of the shelves out. The exclusive edition has 500 pieces and the collector edition has 1000 pieces. What makes the exclusive edition exclusive is the lance. I think the lance is a significant exclusive piece because it gives her a distinctively different look when held versus how she looks when she's holding the axe. They both look pretty awesome though, but the lance is my personal favorite because it's the weapon I most remember her having in the comics, especially in the Image universe. In fact, Melbosia impels her with this lance in Spawn issue number 100. Moving on to the sculpt. I'm a fan, I like it a lot, it's pretty cool looking. She looks extremely close to her comic book version. There are no visible seams where the head and the hands connect and she fits firmly on the base. The battle ready stance is a very powerful and dynamic sculpt. Her hair is detailed extremely well and flows really well with the design of the statue. The sculpt and the design of the costume is also incredibly detailed and textured. Check out the breastplate. There's lots of detail in the breastplate, there's lots of detail in the sculpting, and also check out her armor, the very same thing. There's a lot of detail there as well. This statue also has mixed media, which I personally am a huge fan. In my opinion, Sideshow was one of the best when it came to including mixed media in their figures. The skirt is cloth with wires that are woven throughout it, allowing it to be placed in various positions. And the belt is also a material that looks and feels a lot like leather. The ribbons have a wire that's through them that allows them to be molded and displayed in various configurations. By the way, the ribbons are sort of a symbiont that she can wield similar to the way that Ghost Rider uses his chains in battle. She can actually communicate with these ribbons. In other words, the ribbons are a very important part of her persona. I would have been pretty disappointed if they had chosen not to include this. The switch outs are also sculpted pretty well. Um, I like them, They're, they have nice detail. The blades are painted to give the appearance of brushed metal, but they're not metal, they are PVC. I wish they had used metal or a sturdier material. I wish they had chosen maybe to use the same metal or the same idea that they use in the He-Man statue. Moving on to the base, I really like the base. It fits really well with the other two characters, Captain Marvel and Gamora. The base has this, um, rock type element to it. It's very textured. There are these crystals that are coming out of the base 
and as well as there's this lava like flow but it has a blue color to it instead of a red lava flow to it all in all it looks great and it really fits well with the overall theme that they were going for with the entire cosmic group of characters now let's take a look at the paint application on initial on initial inspection i was very happy with this piece I saw Hans Anderson post the picture of the piece that he received, and it wasn't pretty. There were some significant QC issues. So I got pretty excited when I saw how well this piece was painted. I didn't notice any significant paint spillover. I liked the color and the shading of the base and the armor. But then I took a look at her breast. I was crushed. Check this out. It's not visible when viewing her at eye level, but when you look down, it's glaring. To date, over the past year, I've sent back Green Goblin, Captain Marvel, Gamora, and now Angela, which makes me pretty nervous about Thanos on Throne. I hope they get that one right. But what's also interesting about the pieces that I got back is what is that they had no edition number. I love the work that Sideshow does, but these paint QC issues are extremely frustrating and time consuming considering you have to pack them up and send them back and forth. I wish I could fix these issues myself, but I am nowhere near that talented. My overall opinion though, is that this piece is really nice and I like it a lot and I'm a huge fan of, of uh, Spawn and the Guardians of the Galaxy. So owning this piece is pretty fantastic for me, so I'm definitely going to keep it. Uh, and I definitely would recommend it for anyone who's a fan. So that pretty much completes my overall opinions and thoughts about this statue. So please let me know what you think by leaving comments below. And, and thanks for watching. I really appreciate all the likes and subs. So until next time, peace.